2014, 2015, something around then, I had a reading, a tarot card reading, and she'd mentioned that about a twin flame. And then I just, but I didn't really know what it was at the time. And that's when it sort of sparked my research, but I knew the relationship I was in was the toxic one. I was in that same place, like you're so waiting for that. They're, they're gonna change, they're gonna change, they're gonna, and you're holding on to them, like, and you actually believe this is your twin flame, you actually believe they're gonna change. But in truth, they kind of, they are your twin flame on one level because they they're are, mirroring, they're, they're mirroring yeah. the unhealthy parts of yourself. Are we live? Are we live? <laughs> Don't take us about oh, that. Oh my up. god! I know. We finally made it. I know. We've been saying about doing a podcast forever. I like this little setup. It's quite cosy. Yeah, I feel comfortable. I just wanted to be really comfortable. Be able to just have a little chat. Yeah, and you definitely got a better microphone. I did. This is the new one. Like, I need this one is of the these. new one we've got, guys. Like, <laughs> I need one that of was these. the that was the. No, you got the OG. There's nothing OG about this. I got like a sit forward with a crook neck and, and stuff. I much prefer that. We've just oh. discovered oh. that Gino, as you might have been catching there, has um, found his way to our big oh my God. bag of food. We have to pause for a second. I think he's gonna be sick. Oh my God. Gino Bambino. Sorry guys, we just had to give Gino more water. I was, he, I was looking decided. at him about half hour ago again. He's wow, huge. he looks so bloated. That, like, Gino looks massive. Like, what's been going on with Gino? And then um, Lauren's like, oh my God, did you leave the food on the floor? And I was like, oh my God, did I leave the food on the floor? What, what accent is that? Uh, what accent is that? That's your crazy accent. That sounds like American. That's when you go crazy on me. That's when I know something's gone wrong. It's time to get out of here. <laughs> Gino has just eaten basically half of his food that's supposed to last three months. Gino went in. Gino went in, so we've got to keep Gino, an eye on him. Come yeah, messing about. Oh my God, he's, literally he's literally doubled in size. Doubled in size. I look thought this. Oh, say something that looked right with this dog at the minute. Oh my God. I thought baby. maybe he might have been like having some oh internal God. inflammation going on. Oh, but yeah, we don't need to feed him for at least well, another David two decide, weeks now. Well, David decided not to put his food in a cupboard. Did you just hear a girl American on me? No, I didn't. American. Honey. Oh my god. Anyways, it's really good to be back and it's really good to be able to record and yeah, to start these podcasts. I mean, we haven't really uploaded a video for a couple of weeks now, have we? No, not on our YouTube front because we've been yeah. super busy. Only because, yeah, you've been busy, you've been working, grafting, grafting. pretty much every day in the week, um, helping out a friend. Oh my god, he's shaking now. Gino. We would try to guess or you're going to be sick, but it's okay. Right, anyway, let's move on past oh. little Boom Boom, because it's yeah. his own problem, I don't feel sorry for him. He's got me in trouble, <laughs> and he can just be a little floaty, bloaty dog for a little while, and that's his problem, ain't nothing to do with me. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. So, we haven't been doing any YouTube, have we? No. But we have always wanted to do a podcast, so here we are with our podcast, our first episode. I don't know where to look, I don't know where to look in the microphone, I don't know where to look at the camera, I don't know where to look at you, mate. I have just no clue. Them all. No, a little bit. I'm just going to go with whatever feels natural. And we pretty much talk like this, like... All the time. Every day, like, time. deep. deep. But no, actually, it. we don't always have deep conversations. Most of no, the time, no. we don't really have too much conversation. Yeah, but if anyone was on looking onto our conversations, they would be like, bloody hell, they're deep. Yeah. We've got a lot to say, we've yeah, got a lot to but share. but before we even go into this, guys, you know, we are recording for the YouTube, we're recording mics for the podcast, but we'll do a little introduction. So as you can see, we are a little couple. A little couple? A little couple. We're getting married in four weeks. <laughs> I know we are. We're literally getting married in four weeks. So I'm Lauren. And I'm David. Yes, and we have been together in our union for just over two years now. We yeah, just our, over. Yeah. We've literally just hit our two-week mark, a two-year two mark, mark yeah. a week ago. Yeah, it's like two weeks ago. Two weeks it? ago. So... Yeah, so exciting. And yeah, like David said, we're getting married in four weeks and we cannot wait. But yeah, no, we thought we'd just come on here just to make a little introduction. And yeah, share our reasons of why we want to do this. Because, you know, David and I have definitely, well, I mean, we're both spiritual teachers. We both teach uh, Reiki, we teach mental and emotional health. 
uh, on our Instagram and all our platforms, really, haven't we? We do, yeah. And um, yeah, we just wanted to yeah go a little bit more deeper into it because our videos and our YouTube it's more lifestyle where we definitely feel guided to talk directly about subjects or things that we've been going through ourselves as a union, as a couple, our healing journey, but my healing journey, your healing journey. Yeah, and also talk a little bit about how we was in our more wounded states, mm. um, kind of like addressing wounded masculine energy versus more healed masculine energy, yeah. wounded feminine energy versus more healed feminine energy, talking about our relationship and how I believe relationships are the crux of like of, of healing between between two people. Hundred percent. I don't actually. There's no actual like the the ground of a relationship is the best place for personal growth. A million percent. Mm. You can only do so much healing on your own. And like before we both met, we've definitely we went through our own internal changes before our meet in the physical realm. But I feel like we'd always known that we had a spiritual connection. I had a reading actually. Um, what year would it have been? It probably was like 2014, 2015, something around then. I had a reading, a tarot card reading, and she mentioned that about a twin flame. And then it just, but I didn't really know what it was at the time. And that's when it sort of sparked my research. But I knew the relationship I was in was the toxic one. Was mm -hmm. it? Because there's, there's false twin flames out there. Yeah, I think uh, we yeah. def we'll definitely talk a little bit about that at some point. About... No, we should sort of talk about it now because it's oh, so talk about it now. Like, Yeah, because no, I was in the same thing as well. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of when we're... So always the toxic people. You're like, yeah, he's my twin flame. I like, know. No matter what he does, I'll love him forever. And it's like, I was in that I was in that same place. Like, you're so waiting for that. They're, they're going to change. They're going to change. They're going to... And you're holding on to them. Like, and you actually believe this is your twin flame. You actually believe they're going to change. But in truth, they kind of they are your twin flame on one level because they they're are, mirroring they're, mirror. they're mirroring yeah. the unhealthy parts of yourself. Yes. Yeah. So they are, and that's why it's one of those things. It's like there's so much healing to be done in a toxic twin flame and a twin flame. Like I don't think it actually matters. But no, then... but what does matter is when you're in a toxic twin flame, there's an element of holding mm. on. Yeah. There's an element of there's that no person's going to change. Whereas our twin flame. It's like we both know we're, we're going to change. Yeah. But it was because we mirrored that. So, like, I knew that, that that the past relationship I was in was a mirror of my toxicity. I, like, I knew it. Like, towards the end, I was just, like, seeing it so clear. I was like, oh, my God. Like, it really is. And when I took that responsibility of myself of, like, learning those lessons, you realise that the other person just completely... It's like that it just sort of floated away. Like, it was gone. Mm. Like, it was literally, it, like come to an end that path mm. come to an end like and i felt the ending of it and the ending was only reflection of that that my toxicity in me ending yeah. so when the toxicity ended and i think that's why you know people ask like how do i know i'm in a twin flame how do i know this is not my toxic twin flame if you commit to doing your inner work and you learn those lessons that your karmic partner is showing you if that comes to an end as in you learn those lessons and you like you swear that you are going to, you know, you do the things for yourself. For example, for me, I had to learn my lessons on, you know, not being loyal, lo like loyalty, truth, honesty, stuff like that. But the moment I came into alignment of being honest with myself, being truthful to myself, and like placing those boundaries for myself, it, it ended the path because the other person couldn't do that. It was like, I did my part. I learnt my lesson. And then literally, the relationship just ended because he wasn't on that same path as me. Yeah. So then that, that, that was like the sign of like, oh wow, like I actually can't control, I can't change him. I can only change myself. And that's when I actually, it was it hit me with that, okay, I, this is, I, I, it's go. just, I've got to let go. I think the biggest thing, like, if anybody's like wondering whether this person's your twin flame, I think the biggest thing, the biggest red flag is, is that person actually changing? Yeah. Because like for me, be I was in, I, I was changing, changing with my ex and yeah. I was holding on to the, but I could clearly see that the more I was with her, she wasn't changing at all. Yeah. And. I think that's for me, like, I knew at some point that I'd outgrown her 
as a not as a person but energetically outgrown yeah. I, my vibration had risen high enough that i was no longer a vibrational match to her yeah. and that signal was that i was able to walk away from that relationship whereas before because i was so toxic in myself i was toxically bonded to yeah. her yeah. and so i was attached to her and i was, ne I was never were, able to walk away yeah. But, but once you weren't attached to because it was like you're attached to your suffering, you're attached to the pain of it, yeah. like the cycles of it. Yeah. But when you start learning the lessons, you start doing your healing in that relationship, I believe everything changes. And that's why I feel like for the advice I'd give people would be like, you know, don't just, ending a relationship isn't just going to solve all your problems. If you actually go into the relationship, you know, if you're going back to a relationship, an old relationship, or and you know it's been in a toxic cycle, if you go back and you communicate... I'm actually going to take responsibility of the, dis the, the disruption and the distortion in this relationship, the, the, the turmoil, because it always takes two to argue. <laughs> it always takes two to create that turmoil. But if you're taking responsibility of your part and you are changing in what you want them to change, if you change your psyche, your responsibility, if you change your actions that may be caused more harm, and you stop doing that, and you become a better person in that relationship. Like I said, if that other person isn't mirroring that, that is a true sign that that was just a karmic cycle. Mm. Like, it's a true sign. Mm. And I feel like me and you were both in those long-term relationships before meeting, that, that we knew at, at some point when we were changing, we were committed to learning and growing and transforming ourselves, that that relationship just fizzled out. And it just... It just it just died. It yeah. did, and it was very painful because that, you know it's you you. There's still things you love about that person, and there's still things that you know that you you, you know you had great memories and great you know your com. It was your comfort. Yeah. It's your safety. Normality. Normality. Yeah, felt, yeah, yeah, you're used to it. So there's a, le a level of grief you have to go through to let that go. But the one thing that that's why it's all about your mirror is that we were both in this vibration at the same time. So when so energetically our vibrations were already resonating at each other's at level point, sure. at high points so when david and i had actually came together in this reality physically we'd always known of each other that's why it was such a spiritual connection with us because when we met it was like i recognize your smell that was the weirdest thing i remember the first night when, when I stayed with you, I smelt you. <laughs> it sounds really strange, but I smelt you smelled and me. it smelt like home. I couldn't understand because, like, you know, I've been with other partners, I've been with other people, and you know, it's just like, you just know that it's just not that, mm. that chemistry, that, that feeling of mm. home. And as soon as I was with you, I just knew. And it was like one of those instant things. And it was like... Yeah, I wouldn't say like our relationship was like fireworks. I would say it was more no, like relief. It was, yeah. It was relief. Oh. It was like... Oh, like, like I found you. Yeah. I found you. I found oh you. my god, yeah. I found you. Yeah. Like it's taken us this long. We found yeah. each other, and I feel like that was definitely it from like get go. And I feel like we kind of knew having conversations before we physically met, like as in physically saw each other. The conversation, as soon as we started speaking, it was like we we're speaking the same language. We were on that same frequency. Yeah. Like everything. Like I used well, to. Well, within the first hour of me and you meeting, we was ho you was hosting my meditation yeah. class with me doing Reiki. Within the first hour of physically meeting each yeah. other, but the first we were teaching time... other people. Like yeah. that's just like mental. But the first time we actually spoke on the phone, we were on the phone for nearly four or five hours. Yeah, straight. Like I remember four or five hours straight. Yeah. We did not stop talking. We're like, whoa, this is mad. Like, yeah. and I, we've had that in the past with people. You know, you speak, but when it's your language and when you feel understood and. The level I was at before meeting you, not many people got my my state of consciousness. No, I'd, so and many my people don't. Even yeah, now, like I've, I've met it. very rare, very uh, yeah. none. Yeah, I've met none. You're the first person I've ever met in my physical life that somebody that I can communicate with, and that I can be with all of the time that understands what I'm saying. Yeah, because we kind of do speak a different language. We do. It's not a. It is a different language. But it's just like a it's, more emotional intelligence. Conversation. I would it, say it was it's a, emotionally intelligent. I would it's emotionally say it was a more wider depth. state of consciousness, a more yeah, higher perspective, a higher perspective, a yeah. higher perspective on yeah. things that and situations. Like I'm never one to just like if something happens, like a, a situation happens and it feels off, I will be like, my consciousness will go and then see it and what perspective, how did that come about, what emotion was that person bringing to the table for the other person to react like that. Like I've always been like that. More so the last few years, 100%, like last two years, 
three years, just before, the year before I met you. Well, actually, not even that year before I met you. I feel like it's since we've met. Mm. Like, the intelli- it something just went poof. But before meeting you, I was definitely in the vibration of, like, working on myself, self-love. Where can I do better for myself? Where can I set boundaries for myself? Where can I say no to people where I've been a people pleaser? Where can I, you know, set boundaries with men where I've been used before? You know, there are certain things and like lessons I had to learn before meeting you in person because before about, I was definitely working on myself like hardcore the, first, the last five weeks before I met you, five weeks prior to meeting you, I, I was hardcore isolation on my own, working on myself, love, working on getting to know myself because pre that I was just in toxic I was, I was attracting toxic men still and toxic situations and going places I didn't want to go. Like, I was going out a lot and I just... I was in Marbella, I was in Dubai and the vibration and frequency was just not me. But I feel like once I cleared all of that away and I was like, I'm so done with that, like that cycle ended, yeah. it was like, right, I need to get my life together. I need to sort myself out. I need to like be happy because I'm really not happy. And it was like I was at my lowest point ever five weeks prior to meeting you and then five weeks of just solid like I learnt my masters I did my masters in Reiki I, I did my master teacher course and I just focused on what I wanted to do rather than anyone else I went selfish of like I can't people please anyone do everything for everyone else I need to do something for me because I actually deserve this and I think that moment I realised that that self love I, I found a new level of respect for myself and I feel like if I'd met you pre that you just would not have respected you me. You wouldn't have met you me just, pre that. I wouldn't, have. It, you wouldn't we, have. We wouldn't have physically got into that vibration. And because the, the people I was attracting were physically in that vibration of all over the place. <laughs> like literally every man I've met in that sort of period, like after Lewis to meeting you, that period was like all toxic people. All of them. I didn't meet one person that wanted to commit, one person that wanted anything more than just fun and just... Fun. Yeah. Why don't you define fun? Oh, God. Uh. We'll talk about that another time. But, I mean, yeah, it was like I knew that the next person I was going to meet was going to be my husband and someone who was actually going to take me seriously. And then, yeah, five weeks of work on myself, putting myself in an environment I felt safe in, comfortable in, I felt myself in, allowed me to get into that vibration to meet you. And then I feel like I, you probably did the same. Weren't you doing... What was, what was your experience like, you know, coming leading up to meeting me? after leaving your ex? Yeah, I think, I've, I, since my awakening, like six years ago, I've kind of had, it's odd because like, how I've always, I haven't really, I don't think I've done self-development. Like once say I've done self-development, no. I say that I've witnessed my old state of consciousness more. Yeah, I can see that. Like, for me, like, I haven't... I don't feel like... I Am I a better person today? 100% I'm a better person today. But the difference is I haven't actually changed myself. What I've done is I've purified myself of my pain and my suffering. And the only way I've done that is by awakening out of it more and more. So while you've had a process of self-development, I've had a process of self-discovery. Like, who is David Cronin? Like, my awakening... It give me like a separation in my consciousness. It give me a greater perspective. And then from that perspective, all I've done is observe my old self. And mm-hmm. as I've observed my old self over these past five, six years, I've realized that my old sense of self was built on pain, was built on, on um, so, uh, I've emotionalized a sense of self that's very painful. Yeah. So who I thought I was, was a very painful person. And, um, you were very dark. I you? was very dark. I mean, that's why and when very, we first and, met, and, you was and, Beauty and the Beast. I'm very, yeah, you, well, you're definitely the beauty, but, you know, like, I'm less and less of a beast these days. You are less and less of a beast. I'm less and less of a beast. When I met beast. you, it, you've had your transformation, though. You did what Beauty and the Beast did. Yeah. You literally went through, through, your, transformed your darkness. Through love, yeah. Through love. Through meeting me. Yeah. And you've turned into the prince. But I wouldn't say that. I, soon to be a king. Soon to be a king. <laughs> I already feel like a king in myself. I, know you not do. Like, I mean, that's why we're ready. But for I rule my king, like my kingdom. Not like I'm a king above everybody else, but like, a, like, because in king, in reality, you have like a king, and then you have everybody under the king. Yeah. I don't feel like there's anybody under me. I just feel like, like I'm no, so like, aligned yeah. with with. 
No, but there is. We've, it's God. It's God's the king. Uh, yeah. There, and we were the 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 under you know the queen and let's say the princess. I wouldn't even say the king. I no, feel... but then you've embodied more of God. I've embodied, embodied more, more of God, of God but more I feel, love, do you know what I feel like? Which is turning you into a king. Yeah, but I feel like more than anything, the spiritual journey has humbled me. Oh, hundred percent. Like I oh, feel like I, I have you, been yeah. so humbled by by God. It's not yeah. anybody. Else. I can't say it's anything. It's God. God has truly and utterly humbled me by allowing me to see how much suffering I was in. Yeah. That's how I've been humbled. Yeah. And God, you know, in in terms of you know, how you see God, how your perspective on God is. Everyone has different terms. God, you know, people, you talk about God and you've got to be religious, but actually you don't have to be religious. David and I aren't religious at all, yet we know God. And God to us is our, is, is the light. It's the love. It's the, it's the light that can shine on our darkness, that can transmute our darkness into light. And light is love. Love is God. God is everything in existence this huge energy that has positive negative good bad light and dark and it's like and yeah and i feel like through because i was definitely more spiritual with my beliefs with god um but as i've seen like you said exactly the same as you as we've we, we've been purely humbled and like surrendered in ourself to god to the light to love because that has shown us our dark. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like we've connected to that. And that has been our everything. Like since we've met, it was God first. Like we even said that. Like it wasn't myself first. It wasn't you first. It wasn't me first with you. It was God first. Us as servants of God. And for us to do our work to embody more God mm. energy in us. And I feel yeah. like that is like, you know, talking to, that, to anyone like, else. It's like, like no one would really is... get it. But it yeah. was suddenly we knew this. We knew when we met, that instant connection was, we spoke about this as soon as we first met, didn't we? Yeah. That this was our mission. To so, to do you transform. know what? Going back onto Twin Flames, it's like, yeah. how do you know if you're in a Twin Flame relationship? Like, you have no questions. You have no questions. If you're like questioning the person that you're with, is this my Twin That ain't your Twin Flame. If you're yeah. questioning them, they ain't your Twin Flame. Because when so you meet true. your Twin Flame, you know. You know. And that's it. I was the, like, the first time I met you, I saved you in my phone as my wife. No, nothing else. I've never no. saved you as anything other than my wife until years later I'm getting married to her. Because I knew, the moment I looked at you, I was like, it something was no hit me. It was like, something just hit me so deep. And then after that first week we had together, we was like, I, I don't even need to say the first week like I just knew. Yeah, I know. So the moment I met I moved him, in with him after four days. <laughs> Literally four days, yeah. Moved in after four days. Haven't been able to get rid of And then we got matching tattoos. Got matching tattoos. After seven days. That was our seventh day. Seventh day. Yeah. Yeah. And we just knew there were so many like spiritual, otherworldly messages. The first, the, the first continue, week was insane. But the first week was, was just insane. We knew it was a God given relationship. Like that's all we knew. Like it, we couldn't explain it. The downloads, and I'd say when I say downloads, it was like if you think about like you get an idea, you get a bit of inspiration, that, that's a download. These downloads were like, Biblical. They were biblical. <laughs> they, they were a hundred percent biblical. It was and all about Adam and Eve, I've not Jesus read and Moses. The Bible. So I never, even read, I never the Bible. read the Bible. So the fact that these things were coming to us about Jesus, Moses, Mary Magdalene, um, what was it? Who else? It was mainly oh, like oh, just um, Jesus' mum. Moses, the Jewish, the whole kind the of Jewish like, line, the, the, the blood bloodline, line. the Christians. Christian bloodline, Christian bloodline, Christ bloodline. Christ, yeah, it was mad, and it, it just was, was like that but week. I he was like, if anybody, if anybody knew what yeah. was going on, they'd think yeah. it was mental. David and I are not religious. Like I said, we've never been religious. Like obviously, I've had, I've come from a Jewish background. You've come from a Christian, Christian background. Yeah. yeah, so we've like had that background, but you, you weren't. I was only. I went to synagogue probably. I was full blown Christian. Were you? I was Up Holy until... Communion. Oh, you did all that. That's one until you were about thirteen, right? Yeah, to about. So I was thirteen. To about twelve, and then I was okay. rogue. There we are. Like, exactly same with me. After twelve years old, thirteen years old, I did my bat mitzvah, and then I just went rogue as well. I never went back to um, synagogue and or did anything. I literally just did it because you had to. It was a school. It was something you you know we all did. But other than that, I didn't. I like these downloads that were coming to us on that first week of meeting. It was just like. 
it felt like we were in the Da Vinci Code. Yeah, it did, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it was like us having to crack these codes. It was the most... If anyone had seen what we were getting up to, my mum was the only one that actually saw it. My dad was witness to a bit of it. Yeah. Did your mum know what was going on? Not no, really, no. no, no. Apart from my mum... But my mum's so open with stuff. I'm surprised how open she was. I come bowling. I in. told Matt, one of the guys that was a per- personal trainer, um, and he was like, "Are you all right? Are you all right? Are you all right?" You, <laughs> if any, I you think seem we would have. Yeah, I think if this. I didn't see him after day, that. I know for him since. <laughs> but I genuinely think if anyone heard us, we would have been in like a, a, a in like a, a ward. <laughs> yeah. We would have been put in a ward, but luckily we had people. You know, my mum were around and. And I was trying to explain these things. And it, it's not even just in dream state. It would happen when we'd be sitting next to each other and then suddenly something would come to you. And then it suddenly would come to me. And then we'd be working out. So the whole like Adam and Eve story, that was one of our first stories like we'd ever, like after meeting, after like, I think it was like after the first night, wasn't it? The following day. The following day, yeah. I went and grabbed an apple. And I still remember this story from like day one. But I grabbed an apple and I went, oh babe, because I think I'm, we went shopping or something, just got a few bits. I never buy apples. I bought pink ladies. I bought them. I've already bought them, yeah. I never buy apples. Yeah. Apples are like my worst thing to eat, but so for I some reason, the week, the few days before I met you, you just I bought pink, ap- pink, pink yeah. ladies. So then I grabbed one and I went, I'll oh, babe, do you want some? And you're like, yeah, I'll have some. And then I went, oh, babe, do you want an apple? And you picked, you, he grabbed it, caught it, and then picked it up. And I went, oh, babe, do you want an apple? And you picked, you, he grabbed it, caught it on the sofa, and then said, do you want an apple? And you picked, you, he grabbed it, caught it on the sofa, and then said, you're manipulating me. No, I said Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. You went, and Adam and Eve. And I was like, well, do you want the apple then? He was like, that freaked you me out. Freak I got out. that right there. I just got freaked yeah. out then you saying like, that to me. And I was like, do you want the apple? And you were like, you're manipulating me to eat the, the apple. It was mad. And I was like, and then I could feel this energy like, I just, I just had the weirdest feeling me? that Eve, Eve, because Eve give Adam the apple in the garden, right? Yeah. But I just had this weird feeling that Eve was manipulating herself and through Eve's own ignorance... Like, you know how women, like how you was as a child, you just loved everybody. Yeah. Do you get that? But like Eve... Like not strong-willed enough. Not, not, no, but just so open to the world, so open to everything around, that like you see everything as like perfect. Yeah. And like, the, and she took the apple, like, in a kind of like naive way. Oh, it's just the, the snake. You know, the snake's my best friend in the garden. I love the snake, yeah, yeah. as women are. Yeah. Oh, here, you just here. don't know, but at the time... At the time, at the here, time that freaked he me out. He was like, you're manipulating me. And then I was like, what the hell? now? And then I was like, why are you blaming me? What am I doing? And then it was like all of these messages were coming through with this story. Because I didn't really know much on Adam Adam and Eve anyways. Like you kind of know like that basic story. But what actually happened after like the conversation unraveled and we were like talking and just and, and observing what we we're talking about. Because we were really in it. It was hard to observe when we were really in the emotion of it. And... But long story short, it was basically showing us the blame and manipulation between man and woman, why they are separated. Because it was all lovey-dovey, it was all we, you know, we were so in a yeah, bubble of love think... the first couple of days we met, the first like a day and a half. This happened yeah, day, day and two and a half. And a half. Day two and a half. Yeah, right. Like literally, stuff. it was suddenly, like we argued on day two, like this is... And you were blaming me for manipulating you. And then I was blaming you for blaming me. Or I was saying, you're blaming me. Why are you blaming me? I've not done anything. But you were seriously, it's like your emotion just went, it turned on to it. And I was like, fuck. So it was literally like back and forth, wasn't it? And but unraveling the conversation, once we were out of the emotion of it, because it did bring up a lot between us, um, I think I had to go home, didn't I? I think I went home on day two because it was too much. It was so intense. It was intense. too much. It, it was, was so intense. intense. I needed to get away because I was like, this is just freaky. What the hell's going on? So I spoke to mum and that, when I come home. And then I think that was when you actually picked me up on day three, didn't on you? On Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, you picked me up on day three or day four, whatever it was. This is like the day after. Um, and you were like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know what happened. And then we were actually seeing that this is an actual thing. This is happening between man and woman. And we knew from that day, we were here, our mission as a couple, long story short, was to clear the karma and the separation between man and woman. Mm. Because there was so much blame and manipulation happening, uh, even from day one with me and you. And it was like, 
right, there is some karma here to clear. There's some like actual deep it's karma issues. that we're still clearing today. Oh I'm still clearing karma now. No, a hundred percent. But that's why when we got given the star, so like a few years ago, I'd actually written this the Star of David, um, the two triangles, down in my book and said about divine union, twin flame that I wanted. That was my mission. I knew it was my mission. I didn't know who it was. Obviously, I realised it wasn't my ex. So it was like we were. I knew this was my mission. I had it in a book that you read the other day. You found it, didn't you? I knew it was my mission. Yeah, and then you know it was yours. So then when we met, it was like all of this remembrance happened, and then on day seven we got these. Tattoos. Oh, that's so weird, isn't it? Because you know that that picture that I drew of the owl. Yeah. It had remember. I had like I had that mad like I was just I had no idea what I was drawing. No. I just picked up a pen and I started Stop drawing. drawing. And the next minute it like turned into an owl. And then in the eyes, the eyes were. Um, clocks and I had 11 11 then the middle of the hour was actually shaped into an hour hour glass and then um it had remembrance and it had activation and I writ twin flame on it so I kind of like before I even met you I knew that something was coming through and then obviously when I when I did actually meet you then I was like holy shit like now that we've just said it about the tw- like the Adam and Eve, that was actually the remembrance, remembrance. that activation. Yeah, we was activation. remembering Adam and Eve where it all began, yeah. like where the very this is lifetimes of karma. Well, the, where the core, us, where yeah. the core of, of humanity, because humanity in the mythical story of Adam and Eve started with Adam and Eve in the garden, um, the garden of God, and then obviously um, Eve and uh, Adam ate from the forbidden tree, and then God cast them out of, the, out, of out of his garden, out of the. Out of the Garden of Heaven, so we shall say, and then um, it, and that was shame that actually created it. Yeah. And you know, if we look at human beings shame, now, guilt. shame. But yeah. shame is the very crux. Like I think, like shame was that I went, I rebelled against God. Like you know, when yeah. like, Adam but and shame Eve was the blame. Hmm? Shame was blame. It was the blame. It was the shame of blaming. Yeah, I get that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. shame, what is an action of shame? You can't do shame. Without blame, blame, yeah. Yeah. But it's the shame of the action of doing it. So you eating the yeah. apple, what you shouldn't have done, yeah. is and the it, guilt yeah. and the shame of it. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it kind of comes hand in hand. Yeah. But anyway, since then, we've just been unravelling all of these guilts and shames and the blame, the manipulation, the control, the, the fear between man and woman. And we literally, like, live by this, like... Our journey over two years, the, the amount we've learnt, you know, for ourselves. And it's really and been exposing our darkness. It really has. And like, this is why we really wanted to do a podcast because there's so much to talk about. And, you know, if anyone is being called to, you know, watch our videos and or listen to our podcast and you're going through the same thing, like, I wish we had someone going through what we were going through so we could relate because we felt like we were aliens. We felt like, what is going on between us? And it was only like later on when we found other people were going through the same thing, we were like, bloody hell, we're not crazy. And like Kate Alexander, um, Kate Alexander mm. and her partner, mm. just th- their meeting, like they met a year after us, didn't they? Um, and they went through exactly the same thing. So it was like, oh my God, like I could literally say to her, oh my God, we went through this, this is what we went through. But we didn't, we, we hadn't really met anyone that's done it first. Like we've sort of been the first in our circle yeah. to know. And then we've seen other people catalyze and, and, and join in union after, um, you know, after we have. But yeah, seeing other people on YouTube, like listening to other people's stories, oh my God, it helps so much. And it makes you think you're not crazy. It it can give you more guidance. It can give you more like, you know, you're on that right path. And I feel like, you know, us sharing our story to help those that are going through the same transition or those that even just like can feel they have a twin flame, but maybe are stuck in a past cycle. Like, you know, you know, us sharing our journey to know the signs and what to look out for. Like if that can help someone like, you know, that's it's yeah. We're, we're super grateful to be able to help, aren't we? It's yeah. It's a nice thing that we, you know, we just want to share. Have the experience now. We've had that experience. And we've got so much, so much yeah. to share. And we don't, we, we don't really have too much come up now that we don't, that we're not quick enough to see. I think like the thing in the past that what I would have done is I would have held on. It would yeah. have taken me very long to let something go. Let's, do you know, like well, whereas now if I have it. a problem to see what I'm you doing, to yeah, see what you're doing. but you see it very yeah. quick now. And that 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 is the difference now. Is we're is, in that observer stage. Yeah, aren't we? we're like, not. 
we're not actually stuck in anything for, for too quick. So we don't yeah. we never have rows that linger on. No. Anything that comes up it's resolved with yeah. within, a, within a few openly. minutes. Yeah, we're really open with it. We don't take it personal anymore. Yeah. So it's definitely once you get past that hard transition um, where you're not taking things personal and you don't need sort of that separational space as a twin flame because a lot of people have got that runner chaser dynamic where they don't want to face themselves but whereas David and I from day one we said we were committed we were a hundred percent hundred percent committed to facing ourselves even if it's in the most painful way and unfortunately from day one we brought up so much pain in each other it's been one of the most difficult yet rewarding relationships I've ever been in and I thought my ex was it was difficult and it was toxic and it was hard, but our toxicity still coming out. It was still coming out when we first met. The toxic cycles, like literally, I yeah, realized. Yeah, the difference was they were coming to an end. They were coming to an our end. Our relationship, they were coming to an yeah, end in our relationship. They weren't being continued in, no. in our relationship. Whereas we both saw, like, I literally had this was one argument was like that week, and I went, oh my God, this is exactly what my ex, me and my ex used to argue about. It's the same thing great well i've committed to this now so i've got to face it like i can't not face that's it that's because every human being argues about the same things yeah. it's like we all think like our feelings are like yeah. our own personal feelings but yeah. they're not like the whole the of humanity matters. is like feeding off this like unhealthy toxic cloud that's just like yeah. misted over everybody yeah. you know you scratch beneath the personality of what everybody's trying to portray the good front everybody's what portraying is personal reality that yeah and underneath it, it's the same as everybody else. The unworthiness, the guilt, the hatred, the the abandonment, the aloneness, yeah. that all of them wounds, they're all the yeah. same. And it's like, people like, we feel like we might be alone in our feelings, but actually these feelings that we're feeling, everybody has. Yeah. Everybody, it's just how we're dealing struggles. with them is what's, is what's really, mm. is what varies in human beings. And you know, but then even how we deal with it is still the same way. It's yeah. just different forms. like. All addictions, whether it's work, drugs, sex, whatever addiction it is, it's still a way of coping. So yeah. you might do, you might have somebody that's dealing with it for a business. You might have somebody that's dealing with it for drugs. But it's they're still dealing with the same, the same traumas, emotions and traumas, yeah, the same okay. shadow. But all the time you're like dealing with it, you're you're coping with it. You're never actually allowing yourself to slip into your own shadow. And all the time you're not able to slip into your own shadow, you're actually unable to address those mm. those things. But I feel like when I met you, it like pulled me full force into my shadow. Yeah. Like I literally like, feel like that's yeah. what it done and to me. I, I helped let you see it in a different perspective and like you did with me, you helped me see what I was doing that wasn't serving me. And it's all the fact that, you know, these emotions that we hold and these positions we hold and this pain we hold, for to have your partner make you accountable for it that is it's it, it's amazing it's it's so amazing I mean, yes it's painful for me to be straight with you and you straight with me and say something that absolutely rock hard hurts like absolutely hurts like in the stomach in the heart it's a hard truth but we were committed from the beginning to better ourselves with each other by each other's side and not give up on each other because we both were committed to God, committed to our healing, committed to ourselves and committed to each other. And I feel like that is like the foundation that I've always wanted in a relationship and that I had with you from day one. So it's like no matter what came between us, I knew like it was, we've had horrendous rows. Horrendous. At the start. Horrendous. For a Buddha at me. I threw a Buddha. Of the irony <laughs> threw of that, a Buddha I threw a Buddha threw, statue. Threw a Buddha statue at me. But that I was actual, kicking off. You were kicking off. I was you kicking off. scaring the crap out of me. And well, the you only scared way, the crap out of me when you launched a Buddha well, at me. Well, I need to just <laughs> shut you up. <laughs> but it was just so, the toxic that we've had to go through was just wow. And, you know... You know but what, the levels that we've learned is amazing. And this is why like, I don't want to carry on. I, I feel like this is a good ending but just to let people know the topics that we're going to be talking about like you know we can't wait like every i think like every time we'll talk about different topics and if anyone else wants to comment yeah and leave or, us a comment yeah. of like certain topics they you know we that you want us to go deeper into we're so open um but so a few open. things that we're definitely going to do in our next podcast i think the first one you even know we were talking about sex other. yeah yeah because sex is what yeah. rules this planet Sex. Sex is what? Sexuality. Sexuality. Unhealthy sexuality versus healthy sexuality. Yeah, sexuality. How to distinguish the difference, to how to know what energy you're holding. But sex 
in this world, it's just... It's the biggest drug on the planet. It's the, yeah. And it is a drug, but it's much more more than just a There's drug. There's so it's much a, toxicity. It's a in possession. Sex. It's a possession. It's a possession. And we have gone on a journey, haven't we, babe? Yeah. The last two years, in our sex life, in our, Oh had my God, our sex life. Horrendous. Oh my God. <laughs> we've had the most horrendous journey in our sex yeah. life. We've had like, the worst sex the life The worst sex of our life and the best sex and of our life. And the best sex of our life. And we've reached like but the i'm talking about i'm the worst like it's been hor- it's brought up all of our oh what lies what lies what beneath lies sexual beneath, excitement uh, un, yeah what <laughs> lies beneath sexual excitement is it's hell. horrendous it's, it's hell. hell it's, it's hell. hell so we really really want to do that. our next topic guys is going to be um sexuality like I'm really know, opening talking, up yeah, talking about sex and love um, knowing the difference, knowing between, the difference the two. between the two and yeah and we're just going to delve deep into it because it's definitely been something we've experienced a lot of um, you know education behind what we've gone through oh. like we, if we we would not have been able to talk about this this time last year no like it was I'm, so I'm ready bad. to I feel to like you're open ready. up and talk about it more yeah. now because and, as a guy it's been yeah. it's been uh, yeah. so difficult and things have happened recently um in our family circle about you know seeing the effects it has on our future generation so knowing you know talking about this stuff openly i think is going to help our future generation so those coming into teenagers those coming into their hormones and coming into their sexuality um from you know from 13 and above or whenever they obviously you know go through that hormonal change so yeah there's so much we want to talk about it so yeah tune in i think well we're gonna do a couple a week aren't we at least we'll see i really hope to like i'd love to do this every night if i could but yeah just tune, think... tune in for the next one we're a good out. mix just a way of mixing our channel up some more yeah. but yeah sex is definitely something that needs to be understood from yeah. a much greater perspective yeah yeah Oh, it's been really nice chatting, man. It's been good, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be able to record what we chat about because we oh, literally no. talk about this all the time, anyways. Oh, no. It's oh, like our normal chat. Oh, no, but it's nice chat. to reflect. I like the fact that we've started from the beginning. Yeah. And then we're going to go through like the struggles, the difficulties, how we got out of it, and hope that we can inspire and, um, you know, help other, people. help other people that are going through the same thing. So yeah, we love you guys and thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening and making it all the way through. I don't know how long we've been chatting for, but once I've edited it all together, yeah, I think it's enough. But yeah, thank you guys. And this is the Union Podcast. So thank you for joining. We look forward to having you on our next one. Much love.